Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. I'm driving through the eastern plains of rural Colorado in a 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee 4x8. Interestingly enough, video editor Phil has the same exact model in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. It's actually that way. Yeah, that's east. All right, so in this video, let me be interested to share both of our thoughts on this Jeep Grand Cherokee 4x8. So I'm gonna talk about the interior, exterior, I'll talk about its lights, he'll share his thoughts on different things, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the plug-in hybrid aspect of this vehicle, and whether or not, well, it's worth it. Let's get started on all of that, right now. Do you know what the number one selling plug-in hybrid is in America this year? It's this, it's a Jeep Wrangler 4xe. Hey, this is Philip Vanderboss with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and I am here at the Myrtle Beach Jeep Jam. I actually haven't spotted very many Wrangler 4 by here at the show. This is actually just the third one I've seen, but I didn't have to go too far to find it, because it's parked directly in front of another 4 by This is actually a Jeep Grand Cherokee 4 by and it's my loaner for the week. So I know Tim has recently done some videos on the Ford Lightning and showing some of the challenges he's had charging it in Nebraska. So I thought, why don't I take this 4xe hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and see what kind of challenges I have trying to charge it in South Carolina. Okay, now this plug-in hybrid gets like, oh, uh, they say online, like 25 miles of range, EV only on an optimal day, like perfect conditions. I thought it'd be really cool to do a video and see how far I could get the range. It isn't like a 4xe Wrangler. Let's do this. Then I realized something. So I put last week, a 220 line to my house. So this has 220 volts of power because basically 110 charging, if you plug it in a regular household adapter, that's like emergency use only, is what it's kind of turned out to be. And uh, this one, I want to do 220 and plug it in. So according to the screen up front, it says it'll take like two and a half hours charge on, on 220 and like forever, like a whole day to charge on 110. So obviously 220 is going to go. So I open this up and I'm like, sweet, get that. Get that out of the way, I do this one-handed. And I grab this kit. This is a pretty cool little kit. Boom, and it's got, it's kinda cool, it's got little handles, little things that slot in, so hold it in there. They really designed this kind of nice. So boom, there's my charging cable, except for the fact it's got one of these suckers on it. This is 110 charging. But I did look it up online, and Mopar has a Jeep branded 220 volt connector on their Mopar page for six hundred dollars. <laughs> six hundred bucks for you, but Pullman, you could crazy to me. You can buy the, the same cord online for a couple hundred bucks at Amazon. So I was really surprised to see that and uh, yeah. So I failed that part of the test. But let's keep talking about this plug-in hybrid because it gets more interesting. And actually I got like a three hour drive tomorrow. Let's continue this till tomorrow. So I've been driving this Grand Cherokee around for a few days. I've actually tested out the different modes. So I got the battery electric only mode, the hybrid mode, and then what they have, what they call an e-save mode, which is where you're running on the gas engine, but you're actually recharging the battery some. Uh, unfortunately though, when I, when I took delivery of this vehicle, I forgot to reset these numbers here. So what I've done now is I've actually reset them all to zero. And tomorrow I'm gonna be taking a road trip. So what I'm gonna do is you can see my battery is at zero on the right side there in the little green icon. My battery is at 0% uh, mileage right now, 0% charge. So I have a 225 mile range on gas at the moment. Um, I have a little bit more than half a tank of gas. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna charge up this vehicle so that I'm ready for the road trip tomorrow and then we can take a look at these numbers. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and charge up this Grand Cherokee 4xe. And I tell you, uh, Tim got actually a lot of grief about charging the Ford Lightning, uh, which is obviously an electric only vehicle uh, with a 110 plug. But I, tell you, I gotta tell you, I live here at the beach in an oceanfront condo and uh, we don't really have very many options here. Um, so as you can see, this is my uh, Grand Cherokee here. This is in my parking space. And if you go look at the garage, this closet over here is the only place that we have power down here. And this is the cord here, my charging cord, and it's not gonna reach. So in order to plug in the Grand Cherokee, I need to move the vehicle over on this side of the garage. So that, you know, works in a pinch in an emergency situation, but it's not gonna be something that I'm gonna do every day to charge with. So now that I live here, um, I could probably get some charging put in full time. And if you look down here in our garage, it's only a nine unit building. So it's a pretty small building. We have our electrical service comes in over here on the other side of the garage. So I'm pretty sure I get an electrician to hook me up with a you know, level two charger over here on this side. And then I just have to move my space and park my vehicle here. So if I bought an electric vehicle or a plug-in hybrid, yes, I'd be able to get a charger installed right here and I could charge every day. However, for a lot of people plug-in hybrids, 
you know, you're only talking about charging 25 miles of range, and depending on where you live, what your living situation is, I can tell you, well, before we bought this place, we rented down here at the beach for a year and a half, and we were in two different buildings, and neither of those buildings had any type of options for charging whatsoever compared to what I got here, because they were larger buildings, and they, you know, it's hard to get away with stuff when you have a larger building. All right, so here I just shut down the vehicle. It tells me my estimated time to 100% battery. So we have a level one, 120 volts, we have a 13 hour and 23 minutes. If I was able to charge at level two, 240 volts, it would only take four hours and 11 minutes. Okay, so once it's actually plugged in and charging, here you can see it's estimated time to 100% is now telling me 20 hours and 14 minutes. So I believe that this automatically figures out how much time you have left to charge based on what's actually getting through what you've plugged in. So if I go over here to the screen and type or hit the vehicle button, you can see we've got uh, electric, off-road, and controls at the top. So I do an electric vehicle right there, charge setting. So right here, you can see the rate is currently set to medium. So if I turn that up to rate four, now it should be charging a little faster. So here it says now 19 hours, 50 minutes. If I increase it again to high, now it's telling me 14 right there 14 hours and 30 minutes for charging if you look here at the screen though it says in case of issues during charging select a lower level charging at a lower level takes a longer time to bring the vehicle to full charge obviously so i guess what's going on here is uh in relation to maybe the weather the heat the temperature outside maybe the quality and the conditioning of the electricity that you're feeding into the vehicle uh you know the, the quality of the service that you have and also maybe kind of the status of the battery uh, might affect how quickly you can charge. So right now I am charging at the highest rate here, but if I do have trouble with it, it recommends uh, pushing it back down. So I'm gonna leave it at the highest rate overnight because I'm gonna be leaving in the morning. So here we can see 14 hours and 30 minutes, 28 minutes. Uh, I'm gonna be leaving probably about 13 hours from now. So it probably will not be fully charged when I come back down in the morning. Let's start with this interior first since, well, I'm sitting right here. So uh, I thought I'd share a little bit of sun and a little bit of shade because it's really sunny out today, but that's what it is. I have some controls here. There's a little bit of wood here, like fake, looks like a little fake wood. It looks really good though. And then so we have different set modes for the seats. I have a little bit of gloss black on here coming around. I have a big infotainment screen, which I'll show you more at night when we do some more night stuff. Um, adaptive cruise control here, menu system for the controls there, paddle shifters, wipers, and the turn signals as well as the lights uh, we have a screen here i'll show you more again more at night with that more at night with that screen and we have some controls here heated seats cooled seats heated steering wheel um, i do have the uh, different tuning knobs and screen on screen off now, this is a cell phone charger back in here boom charge your phone i will tell you that gets really hot <laughs> i learned that from experience grab my phone but burn myself this hdmi actually works for that screen again i'll have more details when it gets dark time and then we have four wheel drive here different drive modes and different uh as far as air suspension entry exit set up right now but as you drive it raises itself, achieves aerodynamic height, and they also have some off-road mode, allows you to get a little higher, a little bit more ground clearance. Uh, we have some cup holders there. I have a little bit of a storage bin here for my sunglasses, because I don't have any other place to put the darn things. And then a little bit of storage in there as well. So, uh, not an amazing amount of storage. I do have the Overland on the seats. And I gotta say, overall, pretty comfortable seats. Um, I've driven, like I said, to Denver and back, 180 miles each way, and I haven't felt like I've been in I've been too tired driving this, so seats are good, headroom's good, and then I have the panoramic moonroof that goes from here and over the second row, so even your kids get a little sunshine. So let's go ahead and hop outside, because, yeah, okay, vehicle's ready to drive. Yeah, I got it, it's on. Okay, great. All right, uh, oh, I gotta talk about the uh, Macintosh, or Macintosh, I can never say the word right. The, uh, the speakers, yeah, they rock. This has a 1,050 pounds of payload. I'm going to show it right there on the screen. 1,050 pounds of payload. We'll talk more about that. Uh, Grand Cherokee there spelled on the side. American flag is always cool to see. I have the 4xE, which this is the connector there as well, which we'll talk more about that in a minute. Trail rated, and I have on the front the blue tow hooks. Yes, the blue tow hooks, because they're blue color, so you know this is the 4xE version. That's what they're doing there. And I'll see if I can't get around the glare here. It's a really nice looking vehicle. <laughs> it really is. Uh, I just, yeah, how do you not like that vehicle? Um, I like it quite a bit, obviously, you can tell. But looking over here, we have Wrangler Goodyear tires. Uh, what do we got? Uh, they are R18s, 
262 was a 26560 R18s. We have Grand Cherokee spot there as well. We have a dual tone here. We have gray, like a gray, like a, I would call this a darker gray. And then we have a black on top with kind of chrome there. Looks, I think it looks pretty sharp. The mirrors do fold in on the lock button, which is kind of cool. A B was flying around, won't leave me alone. In the back, we can see where everything kind of closes in the back here. And then we have Jeep 4 bay there, 4 bay Overland, hit the button a little too soon. That Jeep, darn bug. Uh, back here, we have the chrome exhaust tips. Uh, kind of a nice cover, and then we have the cover for the uh, hitch receiver for towing. But we have a nice kind of look back there. Um, uh, it's that time of year, folks. They start sending up snow brushes with my seven day press loans because they don't know what's gonna happen in seven days. I don't like this time of year. Get those things out of here. <laughs> I don't want it to be snowing. Uh, back here, what's interesting is we do have the spare tire. We have this good deer here, which again, I'll get to in just a minute. I'm gonna get to more of that in just a minute. Uh, as you have with FCA products, we do have a, a charger there as well, but also you have this button here is what lowers it. Oh, and the Easter egg over here, where I get hit. You can't see it, look at this. No, you can't see that there at all, right? Let me show you that again. Open sesame, open sesame. All right, look. Oh, and now you can see it. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Ah, Jeep's always doing stuff. And then we have the Jeep over here, look. If you can see that with the glare. The glare is intense today. The waning hours of the fall slash winter sun. All right, in the back seats. Again, carrying the theme around. Oh, look, and we have the Always nice to have window shades. Boom, boom, boom. That's great for kids. Uh, and then, okay. I have a bench on the third row, or the second row, excuse me. So let's deal. This comes in second row, uh, two row. Wagoneer comes the bigger version. That would come three rows, but this will be two row. They used to have a Grand Cherokee L, which I don't recall if they're doing that anymore. I guess you guys correct me in the comments. Uh, we have some controls here as well. Have USBs there. Have some vent controls back here too, so you can have your own. It's kind of nice, right? And also, heated seat bottoms on the outboard seats. So this one and this one. Middle seat. Sorry, pal. That's the way life goes. Middle seats suck in airplanes. They also suck in SUVs. That's what it is. Uh, headroom's pretty good. I like the headroom. Uh, pretty good leg room. Again, I'm five foot seven, eight, on a good day. And pretty good headroom. What's the best thing about this vehicle is right here. Hard plastic. So. Those kiddos out there that want to kick their parents' seat, not happening, not gonna happen, no, no, no. That is so good. I have three kids. I would have paid thousands of dollars in certain vehicles to have just the hard plastic back there because oh, kids drive me nuts. Oh, I have a vent over here too. I can feel the vent blowing some air. That's kind of nice. Oh, and I kept, why am I feeling a vent over here too? I don't know, I feel, oh, it's, it's the, it's the outside, whoops. Look at that, I don't need to wait for nighttime. I just gotta wait to drive back in the shade. <laughs> it turns out you put in the shade. So I put this in park. Now that was the that was the cameras, right? So you have a 360 degree camera, plus you have the backup camera, but I, and I have different modes. You look at things differently. And then, so I put it in park, okay? And then you can see the exit ride height is being adjusted. This one I turned it off by doing the volume, which I don't love FCA because of this, but uh, they have a screen off a pasture screen button up here, we'll talk more about that. They have a screen off button plus mute, so, and then they have mute here. <laughs> it always confuses me, I always forget the mute button. Uh, this is a pretty good, fast system. Um, add some widgets, add some navigation, phone, I'm just hopping through stuff, but um, yeah. So very cool stuff, As, and FCA always does a great job in infotainment systems. Uh, we have pasture screen, which I'll tell you, show you more in a second. And we have different off-road modes, launch off-road pages, electric vehicle. I can figure out how much I want to tar target my charge level to, which we'll talk more about that as well. And if I want to schedule my charge, if I want to do my driving history, power flow, that kind of stuff. But I can schedule my charge, plus I can talk about how much I want to save for the battery. And yeah, and how much my battery's at at the moment. My battery's at nothing. Uh, yeah, so there's e-save mode, preserves the current hybrid level for later use. So it's over here, these buttons over here. So we have, yes, I know the vehicle is ready to drive. I got it. We're good. Um, you have hybrid mode, which is using the battery when it has power and using the engine. Electric only mode, which is just using only the battery. E-save mode, which saves the battery for when you want to use it. So it only uses the engine only. So three choices. Uh, and then we have this pasture screen, which 
You can't see that now, but let me move over you some more. Okay, it is all mad at me. I'm sorry. The vehicle's still running. I have to do this by myself. So I'm gonna turn the screen on here. Boom. And there we go. So I can see the screen over here, but you can't see it over there. Kind of cool. Uh, you can watch HDMI movies. I don't know why you would. You have you can, different radio. You can, yeah. Oh, there's controls. I can turn the screen off, manage headphones. I have notifications. Last notifications. Um, and home scene. So, yeah, that's what this screen is. Uh, do I always understand the point of that screen? No. <laughs> I've played it a few times. Uh, I don't get it. I mean, maybe if you have your phone and you want to watch a movie and you want to have a bigger screen, just watch it there as a passenger. I could kind of get that on a road trip. I don't know where else I'd use that. Hmm. Very comments down below. Where would you use that? All right, there you go. The sun is coming up over the ocean. Just brought Buster down for a walk and I uh, checked on the Grand Cherokee. It's still charging, actually. We've got, uh, I think, four or five blinking lights. So we're gonna get that thing unplugged and uh, see what kind of charge we have on it. We're gonna hit the road. Okay, we have a little sun glare this morning, but you can see that the battery is charged at 97%. And it actually says about an hour and nine minutes left to get to the final 100. Alright, so I can't find anything in here that actually shows me how long I've been charging for, but I just did the math on it, which, look at the clock here, look at the clock on my video from last night. So it was just about 12 hours and 20 minutes. So in just over 12 hours, I charged 97% from zero. And actually, if you look over here at the range, I'll zoom in on that bad boy, it's telling me we have a range of 29 miles with the battery, which um, I think it's supposed to be ready for 25. So I'm guessing that just depends a little bit on how you've been driving. Uh, it predicts how long you can get on the, on the on the battery. So, if I'm driving a little bit more conservatively, have a little bit more regenerative braking, using a little bit less power on the on the um, air conditioner and such like that, then it looks like I can get a little bit more range out of the battery. So down here on the left side of the steering wheel is where you can choose hybrid, electric, or e-save. And so I'm just going to stick it in hybrid mode today, which I think is what most people would do if they were doing a road trip and they had a full battery. So you can see what kind of gas mileage we get when we are in running in hybrid mode. I'm using the GPS that's built in rather than CarPlay. I know CarPlay has a bunch of different solutions for this, but I wanted to use the built-in GPS to see what it would do for the Jeep. You can see here we've got some options. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this button for options. And I found here that I can look for charging stations. So I click on that button there. It gives me charging stations along my route. So um, if you can see the first one here is a Tesla, so we're going to ignore that one. So we're 11 miles from Paws Island Ocean Highway. You can see it's a slow charger. And then we got 19 miles to Charge Point in Georgetown. And then we're 67 miles to Mount Pleasant. So well, I'm not sure about this Paws Island one. We might have to ch stop and check and see what that is. But um, so you can see like the Charge Point ones, for example, 19 miles away. So. Um, yeah, uh, there's not too many places. It's not like I'm going to the local, uh, you know, Starbucks or bank or something rather and being able to charge all that easily. So uh, there's not really much public charging infrastructure in this area, which um, is not unlike what Tim experienced in Nebraska. There's not much charging in that area as well. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the road again, and then I just, I'll just i check in with some more uh, thoughts about charging here in a minute. Okay, so I found the charge that's labeled Polly's Island on the map, and here it is at a car dealership, actually. So you see it there on the side of the building. There might be another one here. Um, I believe this is a Chevy dealership, actually, so you know they have it there for charging Volvo. Okay, since we stopped at this dealership here, I thought it'd be a good chance to take a look at how far we've gone so far. So we've only driven 15.6 miles. You can see that it's done 14.4 of those on the battery, 1.2 uh, 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 miles on the gas. And so you can see over on the left, we've only got 10 miles left of range. We're at 30%, 38% on the battery left. And we have 10 miles of range on the battery, like I said, and 230 miles of range on the uh, gasoline engines. I'm sorry, 228 miles of, of range on the gasoline still. So um, that's where we are checking in so far. So we're gonna talk about this a little bit uh, when I get back on the road. Uh, you can see it's, it's focusing on the battery. It's using the battery first and not the gas. So it's not like balancing the two when I'm in the hybrid mode. It almost appears like I'm in electric only mode the way it's been driving so far. I get loaded up here this morning. I thought I'd check out these lights. Look at all these lights. My cabin is really well lit this morning. It is O Dark 100 out here this morning. Besides, this has got perimeter lighting. So when I walked up, all lights turned on and then we'll close this. So lighting there too. 
let me turn it on. Oh, let me show you. There we go. There's lights kind of on. So there's your front lights too. I like it. Yeah. So those are just on. <laughs> and then we have another on. I like the door lights. Door handle lights too. Uh, I like wall lit up vehicles. Let's see where I live. There's not many street lights. And it's nice. Okay, there we go. There are the interior lights. See them there as well. All right. Vehicle's ready to drive. I get it. We come around the sides. Yeah. There's your lights there. I go for a drive so we can't get these prices to show up on camera. I did want to point something out this morning. I don't know if you can hear it on camera, but this engine's really loud in the morning. This is what I wish I had electric power. I wish I had some battery range because uh, I'd like to just prefer drive battery in the morning. I don't know if it's just cold temperature, small engine, whatever the deal is, but I've been really surprised at how, come on, how loud it is. Definitely could be doing EV mode here and be a lot quieter. All right, let's test some of these lights. One thing that's interesting is we have active driving assist, which is just kind of their way. It's it's not autonomous driving, but it shows a little bit of that. And let me set this here. Okay, let me set it. Okay, <laughs> turn on. Uh, I want to show the bright stuff in a minute. One thing I want to talk about though is this mirror. This is going to talk about a lot, but this is a digital mirror. And you can see those lights behind me are not nearly as bright as they would be normally. So then, let's check the brights out. There's your brights. Yeah, pretty good lights. Didn't have a problem. I have auto. I don't have auto high beams as well. So uh, very nice. Nice, comfortable drive. Steering wheel, hearing or the uh, heated steering wheel is heating up. Seats heating up. I'm gonna click the heat on and get on cruising down the road. Okay, I've just arrived in Georgetown, which is a nice little town. Uh, and they have this uh, free public parking lot here. And there's a charge point station here. And actually when I approach it, there's a button here in the middle is for a price. And when I hit it, it tells me the price is free. So this must be uh, Georgetown City uh, provides free parking here, free charging here in Georgetown, which is really nice. Especially since this is basically the only charging station, public charging station that I was able to find on the map in about a 40 mile radius. So. There we go. So just tap my phone there, and now the app authorizes, and I can unplug this. Okay, there you go. So we are plugged in and charging. We are already at 2%. Estimated time to 100% is two hours and 18 minutes. So obviously this is level two charging here, not the level one like we experienced last night. Okay, here we are back at the Grand Cherokee. And you can see I'm still charging. And on the screen, it just says charging. So we can see you got 7.4 kilowatt AC. So yeah, that's not all that impressive, is it? Um, and then down here in the details, there we go. I've been charging for 25 minutes, 40 seconds, and it cost me zero dollars. And actually there it even says power 6.9 kilowatts. So I don't know if that's how much I've charged 6.9 kilowatts maybe. Um, I'm not sure, I'm new to this too. So um, yeah, when you own these vehicles and you get to know this a lot better, then you really understand these things. Uh, the rest of us are still, still just trying to figure it out. So there is the Grand Cherokee. I will note that I have a two-tone color as well, like Tim had, except for I got this red color on here. And I agree with Tim, it's a sharp looking vehicle. I really like it as well. Okay, there you can see we're still plugged in and we have 24% uh, battery and we still have another hour and 57 minutes to go for a complete charge. So, yeah, that just gives you an idea. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's two hours, be 120 minutes, uh, 145 minutes basically, 143 minutes for a full charge. Um, so yeah, we did 24% battery in just over 25 minutes. So yeah, it might speed up a little bit, but um, yeah, that's that's the way this one's going. Now, so here's the way, the way this works though, is your mileage may vary. Different charging stations are have the ability to push different uh, electrons basically through at different rates. 
So you'll get different different results, different charging stations. This is a, a relatively slow one. You can find much faster charging stations with different technology and then that will charge your vehicle faster if you need to. Okay, so there you can see my 25 minutes of charging on this level two charger uh, gave me six miles of range. So yeah, not great. Um, so, and this is the only charging station for, like I said, like a 40 mile radius. And um, so, and it's a slow one. So, although it's free, it's slow. Okay, out on the road here with the Jeep Grand Cherokee 4x8, I have to say I've been fairly disappointed with the ride quality. I don't know what I was expecting, but um, you definitely can feel a lot of vibrations. You can feel a lot of, react of road noise in through the uh, steering wheel. I feel a lot of the impact of hitting different bumps and things. And I just, I tend to believe it comes down to how heavy this vehicle is. So this vehicle versus the base kind of model of the Grand Cherokee, this plug-in hybrid is about six, 700 pounds heavier because you have the battery, plus you have all the wiring and all the cabling that goes attached to that. So um, it's quite a bit heavier than I thought. And I thought with the, uh, I have the aerodynamic ride suspension and all that kind of stuff, air suspension, I, uh, aerodynamic ride suspension. <laughs> Early morning here in uh, Colorado. Since I had the air suspension, I thought maybe it'd ride a little bit smoother, but yeah, I gotta say, I'm gonna give it a thumbs down on the, uh, the ride. I will say the seats are pretty comfortable. I've now driven this way and back. This is my second trip doing this, so it's uh, three hours one way, then yeah. So I spent a lot of time in the seats, that's what I would say. And I find the seats pretty comfortable. I think the visibility is pretty good as far as the uh, driver's view. The controls are nice, everything looks good inside. I like how everything works together. I just, if I have smooth paved roads like this, I'm fine. Give me some roads that aren't so perfect, and I feel like I have just a lot of response from this vehicle. Let's go ahead out to Phil and see what he thinks. So I talked a lot about the uh, plug-in hybrid nature of this 4xe, but I want to talk about a little bit more about just the vehicle itself and what, what you get, what you don't get with this vehicle. Um, so I uh, obviously Tim did a full walk around and uh, of the vehicle inside and out. So I'm not going to sure, share every detail with you, but I can tell you some of the things that I like about it. Obviously, this full uh, panoramic uh, sunroof here, moonroof, is is very nice. I like that. Um, you know, and it's it's not too much heat coming through, so it must be uh, coated in some way, which is good. Uh, I like the uh, digital mirror that Tim pointed out. Uh, I don't use it too much, but um, when I need it, it's there. So I just noticed that the range has gone down to just one mile here. We got 2% battery left. Uh, so I figured this would be a good time to stop and take a look at that miles per gallon. So uh, yeah, it's done 29.1 miles on the battery. It's done 3.9 on the gas. And so it's saying we're getting 44.9 miles per gallon. So <laughs> um, obviously we've only driven, you know, 33 miles, uh, but we've used less than a mile. I mean, less than a gallon worth of gas so far. Um, so obviously that's going to change now the battery is dead. So I'm going to go ahead and reset this here um, so I have a different way of keeping track of what we get gas mileage wise for the rest of the trip. In terms of the ride quality, I noted that uh, I was watching Tim's video and he said he was a little disappointed in the ride quality. And I, I, I get what he's saying about that. This, this is still definitely a Jeep. Um, you're not riding a Lexus or BMW or Mercedes. Um, so you have the, the ride quality is a little bit rougher than you might expect for a premium or luxury vehicle. Uh, the road noise when the engine is running tends to be a little bit um, louder. I noticed in Tim's video also he mentioned uh, how much noise it makes in the gas engine in the morning. Uh, that, that is definitely true, I noticed that as well. Um, although I will say that it also makes a little bit of noise when you first start it up because the air suspension is adjusting the level of the vehicle when you first start driving. So that makes a little bit of noise as well when you first start driving in the morning. Say, so, hey, Phil, I just thought of something. What do you get your fuel economy over there? Just so I'm getting about 22 and a half on my trip. What's it like in your neck of the woods? All right, Tim, so glad you checked in with me here. So I'm on my road trip to uh, Charleston and I've got, I still have another 36 minutes, 20, 21 miles to go. All right, but I can tell you for the whole trip so far, I am 72 miles in and it, the way it's calculated that it is 30 miles of battery and 42.3 miles of gas. So that's in hybrid mode, basically. So I would, like I said, it was battery for the first half or first section of it, and then I've been gas ever since. And collectively that comes to 33.8 miles per gallon. So, um, and obviously the longer I drive, the longer that's gonna go down closer to 28 if I stick on the highway uh, versus if I had to stick to a shorter trip, then it was higher at the 44 range. So, so combined, I'm at 33.8 miles per gallon so far on this trip that I started with a 
full battery charge and then I charge an additional 25 minutes in there too. So. Okay, let's talk about the 4xe part of this Grand Cherokee. So the 4xe is their plug-in hybrid, so you can plug it in in the front as I showed you in the uh, charging video. Uh, you get about 20, 25 miles of range in optimal temperatures. So really, in everyday driving, you're probably under 20, what we've seen from real world driving. And uh, you have quite a bit more price points. So in this case, looking at the vehicle versus the stock Grand Cherokee, it's about $20,000 difference. Now, that's not really apples to apples because this 4BE only comes with certain trims with certain configurations, so it's really hard to get a good idea of what the differences are. The more I've drilled down to it, I find about three to four thousand dollar difference between the plug-in hybrid versus the just regular Grand Cherokee. So um, a lot to consider there. Uh, you're gonna, you know, like I said, you're gonna spend some money on charging it up to get to 30 miles, right? So if you spend two kilowatt hours to charge it which is probably more than that, but you're looking at 13, 25, 30 cents, to, depending on your area, versus like say a gallon of, of gas at 350. So you're gonna save a couple dollars every time you go ahead and drive this in the plug-in hybrid version, as long as you plug it in every night and as long as you have it all set up. So a couple bucks, yeah, I mean, you know, money. <laughs> I hate giving away money, but boy, you know, for the price difference and it's gonna be hard pressed for me to think about Two dollars every time I drive it, over the span of how long, and what's my return on investment, and this really comes down to how often you drive, and what you you know where you live, and can you do the plug-in? Can you do a lot of those factors to make this work for you? Well, let's go check out what Phil thinks. Okay, so I listened to the Tim talk a little bit about the uh, the plug-in uh, nature of this vehicle, the the four by E hybrid, and that battery that allows you to get the 25 miles of range. Um, and he, you know, trying to figure out how much it costs and what the return on investment is, and and I understand that thinking. I understand that you're you're putting more money into the vehicle uh, for a feature that's going to allow you to charge uh, cheaper than you could buy gas. And so one of the reasons to do that is so that you can you know drive your vehicle cheaper. So then you want to look at the return on investment. But I just I look at a vehicle like this. I look at all all cars, and I say, okay, well, you know, that's great that you're looking at return on investment for a four or five thousand dollar you know charging option or. Even if it costs more than that, um, but it's a seventy-five thousand dollar car. So where's your return on investment on the seventy thousand that you're putting into this vehicle? It's like, as I guess, I understand you're paying more for the electric vehicle, but what is your return on investment for the entire vehicle? Like, there's features in this vehicle that I have, like you know, the air suspension and the, the four-wheel drive and the snow mode and the rock mode, and I have massaging seats and I have leather seats and I have, you know. Apple CarPlay and Macintosh Audio is like you know where's the where's the return on investment on the massaging seats or on the premium audio like how do you calculate that and to me you know most people don't they just you know they want it they want that feature they you know you work hard for your money and you want to spend your money on something that you enjoy something that you like so my overall thoughts on the uh, the plug-in hybrid the 4xe is if if I was buying a Jeep right now, I would any Jeep or Wrangler, Jeep, Cherokee, whatever. I would be looking at the four by E option. Even though there's not much of a charging infrastructure available where I live, I will hope that if I will buy it, that they, that they will build it and it will come. Um, there is lots of money being put into the infrastructure right now. The next few years, we should see a big boost in how much electric charging infrastructure there is out there, and and I want to be ready for it and have a vehicle that can take advantage of it. All right, there you go. There's our thoughts on the 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xe. What are you guys' thoughts? Put them down below. I'm curious what you guys' thoughts are on this vehicle and whether or not you go with a plug-in hybrid or not. And I'd be curious to get your thoughts on Phil's video aspect of it, whether you agree with him or not. I don't know. Be interested to get your comments. Check out our website down below, pickuptrucktalk.com. Check out the videos over here. As always, thanks for watching. We will see you down the road.